Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I'm back for a fun video today. It's for Thrifty Thursday, but first up I'm going to do the draw for the winner of my 5,000 subscriber giveaway where I'm going to be gifting a beautiful pack of lovely, I think they're fat eighths um, from a beautiful Moda collection of fabrics because I ended up with two of these when I bought them from a lovely online store here in um, regional Australia, Little Patch of Heaven. Um, so I thought I would gift the second set to someone and I'm actually going to be using these in my current project that I'm doing for the Roxy project. So it'll be lovely to think that someone else can use them. So in one of my past videos, I included just within the video itself, not in the headline or anything um, about how people could enter. And so I have gone through and harvested all of um, the correct um, entries or where people put a comment that had the um, correct thing in it to be entered into the drawer where they wanted to be entered into the drawer. Um, put them on some post-it notes. Use my friction marker so I can reuse these pieces of paper for a future drawer. I'm using my little um, house template which is for my Roxy box which is going to be a fabric um, covered hexagon and clamshell covered box but I thought it'd be the perfect thing to to do my drawer in. So what I'm going to do is give it a really good mix around and then I'm going to put the lid over so I can't see what's inside. I'm just going to give it a bit more of a shake. Okay, and then I'm going to go inside and draw out a name. Again, I'm just mixing around with my hands inside. And we have Patricia Page 7197. And I, you are a very um, yeah, frequent viewer and commenter, so I will post um, a comment below your comment um, with how you can get in touch with me. And um, also, if you're seeing this video after the fact, like this evening when I post it, um, it's a prompt to go back and find um, that comment and get in get in touch with me. Um, and I'll get you to send me your address and then I'll organise to get your little fabric bundle out to you. So well done, um, Patricia, or I think you go by Pat. So then on to a bag of goodies that I haven't even unpacked yet. I actually picked them up from Melanie from Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles um, because she also runs the Embroiderers Guild D-Stash Market. So it was on the day that I got all those amazing purchases. But Melanie also had this bag for me from purchases I'd made over a number of months and I haven't even been through it yet. <laughs> so let's have a look for Thrifty Thursday. Apologies, there will be a bit of a rustle rustling. Let's have a look at these lovely rick racks. I'll keep the bags to reuse. So this is a nice large rick rack and the white ones I thought would be great. I want to do some dyeing with my ink tents, I think, of some of the larger rick racks. Beautiful purple. I don't think I have purple in my um, rick rack collection. And another not beautiful, very pale, and it's a beautiful woven one. It's got a lovely lovely feel to it and then a different color of purple so I've got all the all the purples a lovely red I think I've got a bit of red um, but there's actually two different types in here there's this slightly smaller one that's a slightly deeper red and then a brighter red I think it's only those two types and then a beautiful um, again this is a lovely woven one sort of got the similar similar to that one just a lovely sort of yeah fine fine weave and so that's a beautiful pink. I'll just turn the other light on because I'm not sure how we're going for light. Okay let me put that little bundle over there. I think I've said in a previous video I really don't need any more Appleton wools but I think I'd probably got these earlier on a few months ago um, from Mel and she just puts them all aside. I've actually had to expand my wool collection out because it was just, yeah, not fitting in the little drawers next to me anymore. Aren't these some beautiful blues, which will be nice for some of the little sea um, texture scenes I do, I think, as well. And some good versatile greys. And even this one I can always dye up because I want to do a bit of dyeing with my intents on wools as well. Um, and then, yeah, just some other good colours. Pinks and greens, always handy. The neutrals, the browns for branches. Um, a nice pale pink, another sort of bluey greeny tone. So they will definitely be useful. What I usually do with my wools when I bring them in is just pop them in the freezer for a bit to kill off if there did happen to be any um, wool eating creatures. So I just put it in the freezer usually for a week or two. So I'll do that with that. 
not that I've ever had a problem, but um, I just prefer to do it because it'd be a real shame when you've got beautiful fibres to have something happen to them. Keep that bag because I might put them back in that. So these are some lovely um, woven trims, aren't these flowers just delightful? So it's a really good, really good length. I can definitely see myself using this in projects. So it's that one. There's a nice small blue one, just a smaller quantity of it. But again, you don't need a lot. You can just use a little bit of this as a tab or a little accent. And a small quantity of this one. Again, just really, really lovely. And I don't have one like that in my collection. And then there's a big, big lot of this. Isn't that sweet? Very lovely. So I've got that one and this one. Yeah, beautiful quality to it. Feels, feels really nice. So that will be good. Those down there, and then little chickens, which are very sweet. They remind me of my little chicken from my buddy Martha. I could even make some little chickens out of out of chickens, or wouldn't these be lovely? In fact, even to sort of yeah, fussy cut around. It's actually a great idea for a very simple design. You could kind of draw this, and then yeah, use two bits of fabric to make your own little little applique chickens as well so that's a good little good little fun idea and yeah I love Mel she just has small sort of small sizes of fabric usually just for a few dollars unless they're some of the more fancy sort of yeah linens and things this would have probably been part of a tablecloth I imagine but yeah again I'll be able to cut around the the roses Anything that I think needs a wash, but that, yeah, that smells fine. Some very glitzy Madeira thread made in Germany, West Germany. So in fact, that, um, that dates it as well, doesn't it? It's probably been around for a while, but that would be fun for Christmas, for sort of Christmas trees and things. Pop that over there. Oops, we can't even see that. Some... Um, this is the Auvier Soir silk. It's got the little silkworm on the front. We used to raise silkworms when we were kids. We had a mulberry tree and we yeah, raised the silkworms, let them go through their, their whole cycle. We wouldn't actually yeah, turn them into silk. Just let them have a good life. And then another silkworm one. I don't know if these are vintage or if they're newer ones. I can't even remember. It's hard to tell sometimes, but they look like almost vintage packaging. Oh, some more good Christmas one. And this one's a beautiful burgundy, so it could even be quite good for my um, treasure hunt piece. And even the green, because I've got the burgundies and greens in that. Oh, isn't this lovely? It's like a rickrack, but it's a little trim. But it's... Um, what they've done here is really fascinating it's like they've twisted it to form these little hat shapes all the way along I'm not sure if you can can make that out or not but it's really interesting beautiful um, beigey color and there's a lot I'm just pulling it out of the bag as we go that is a very decent quantity of that put it over with my trims over here and then a beautiful vintage um, antique lace. Mel just has such amazing things. You have to be quick sometimes. These folks jump in very, very quickly. Although I'm trying not to look at her site too much at the moment because I do feel like I've probably got enough. But it's hard when you see something that's really unique and lovely. Another um, silkworm. Well, not silkworm. Silk, silk fabric. Not fabric. Yarn. Another silk one. Uh, and then I got some um, tops and this was even before I was felting I was just sort of starting to think oh it might be fun to get some different fibres I think this even could have been before I went I think it was even before I went to the Fleur Woods retreat it would have been actually because that would have yeah been probably before March so this would have been built this bag of goodies I'm showing you would have built up over quite a number of months so 
So again, I might just pop these into the um, into the freezer as well, just um, being a wool product. I think it's wool. Yeah. Oh no, silk. So Tusa, Tusa silk tops. So they'll be fun to play with. Isn't this beautiful? I was thinking this can go on my um, Burgundy Bonheur treasure hunt panel. Um, even though it's got a few blues, I think I can still let it onto it. And it's, yeah, beautiful um, cross stitch. Love. How beautiful is that? Look how many stitches are in that. So, yeah, I had to, had to save that one. <laughs> had to save it. What's in the bag? Then we have a bag of wooden spools. I just can't resist the old vintage vintage things. Beautiful spools to put little slow stitch and other projects on. Some more as well. This one's never even been used. JNP coats. I've got others. Others like that. Another beautiful one. Shade. Another one here, JP and Coates. Just, just love the wooden spools. This reminded me of something my nana and grandpa had, um, a little collection of bells. Isn't it sweet? And they're really heavy bells. As I say, it's amazing what Melanie has in her in her collection. Um, but I thought they could be fun just to add to the bottoms of little, yeah, little projects or as a little hanger or if you want it to weight something weight something down so I thought that could be kind of cool some brighter trims these remind me of the little um, what's the little flowers in the Edelweiss I think is what I'm thinking of in Switzerland but yeah good amount of that woven trim and then quite a this one reminds me of Hungarian embroidery um, which is the area where Alex's mum is from and I've got some of her embroidered pieces that she's gifted to me so I was thinking I will at some point make a little a little book look how look how intense that embroidery is on or the weaving in is on that so put those down there and this is another one that reminds me of the Swiss flowers really beautiful good amount of trim this is that sort of mock um, silk embroidery in that it's more like a woven um, ribbon, but you can use it for um, silk embroidery. So I will be adding that to my silk embroidery drawer. What else is down here at the side? Um, a beautiful wooden spindle or bobbin, again with some of that sort of silk embroidery thread on it. I probably would have got that for the bobbin itself. Um, and then another beautiful purple in that same mock silk embroidery thread and a grey. And then just a mixed bag of threads. Usually again she has these just for a few few dollars and it's a lot cheaper than buying um, the PLA threads and brand new. Three different colours in that one unless that's a variegated one. I'll sort those into my thread drawers. A selection of random beads. So that's a very old piece because I can see it's on a tool similar to what I found in little op shops and things in regional Australia. Let's have a little very careful look. Sometimes they almost disintegrate when you're opening and you have to go back and do some stitching. Oh, wow, isn't that beautiful? So yeah, I'll have to add that to something in it. Possibly my treasure hunt piece as well, even though I haven't got that much black on it. I think black can go with burgundy quite well, but that's definitely a little treasure. Put that back in here. Might put that over here just so I remember to stitch it on sooner rather than later so that it can stay safe. And then a beautiful mix of um, these sort of rainbow coloured beads and sequins and some various burgundy coloured ribbons so again that will definitely come in handy and then some little packs of beads Maria's beads and trims so beautiful blue bluey green lovely reds blues another blue 
and some beautiful white ones and yeah three dollars originally but as i say mel usually does these for just a, like three dollars four dollars um so they're very reasonably priced so i'll include um, a link to mel's instagram account um, which is where she sells probably mainly cost effective if you're in australia because otherwise the postage would start to make it but she just has whatever she is clearing out from her stash and then these are some lovely dance and i got these because i haven't seen this particular brand before made in denmark they smell quite old so i think they've probably been in the collection a while not in a bad way old i can just yeah just smell the smell the age on them so they'll be lovely to to add to the collection to be used and then we're on to some fabrics So I've got Design Rosemont, Charles Parsons Screen Print by June Gulock. And so it's a lovely, um, these, are, these are just fabulous for doing thread painting into even changing the colours of them if you don't want it so so muted. You can just yeah thread paint in with different, different colours. So I thought that could be great. It's a very decent size again. Some of these down, down here. I put the bag behind me on the chair, so I've got a bit more room. Lovely colours in this one, very spring-like with the tulips and the, the blossoms. Again, plenty to plenty to work with for a project, and plenty to to share with a friend. This one looks like it's been removed from something, but it's got lovely um, wool work, wool embroidery on it. So I thought it would be fabulous just to be able to cut individual pieces out and add them, add them to my stitchery projects. Even some of my texture pieces, this could be quite useful for. I don't know if it's all been hand done or because it doesn't really look machine done. Um, potentially it has been. Has been hand done. It's amazing, very densely, densely worked. And then a very sweet little tray cloth. This one looks pretty perfect, so I think I'm going to struggle to cut to cut into this one unless I find stains or, or damage. Or oh, there's a little little stain, but I might have to give it a wash and see if that comes out. That may well be something that I use in its entirety, but I could even back it onto some fabric or something and make it into a little a little pouch possibly have that sort of fold fold over that could be quite sweet so yeah I'll have to have to have a think because yeah when something's in very good very good condition I don't want to don't want to cut it up I can just put some stitches in then it can potentially be undone by someone in the future years and they can use it themselves. I have fond memories of riding around um, the island of Elba in Italy um, on one of my solo travel trips many years ago um, on a little blue scooter. Um, it was almost like it wasn't a Vespa um, because I couldn't have a Vespa because I, over there you can ride with without a motorcycle license just with a like an Australian international license but you can only go up to a certain number of cc's um, so I, mine was quite a plasticky um, scooter but yeah definitely went well and I had my little blue scooter called cello so cello like the sky um, so I've got that for that memory I think I might even have this fabric already in my collection but again I just love thread painting into these sorts of pieces that's a very nice size of that that linen put that over there some assorted little um, silk ribbon embroidery scraps by the looks of it or maybe they're actually, no, and they're not tied to, oh, no, some of them are tied to a cart. $7.99, they can be so expensive originally. That was probably even a few years ago. That one's got a bit of variegation in the green. 
um, but I'll put those in with my my silk ribbons. I haven't done much silk ribbon embroidery recently. I'll have to have to get stuck back in. This is just a lovely strip of strip of fabric and a really again just nice springy zingy sort of design just kind of conjures up those happy times of warmer weather still actually quite nice weather here but i know we will be going into winter soon so those nice bright fabrics another one of the fake fake um, well not fake but the sort of imitation silk ribbon that's almost like a braid so i'll pop that there beautiful bronzy goldy color again that will be good for my um burgundy bonheur piece a very bright piece Fabric Traditions. I don't think it's got any other name on it. And I would have probably got this because you can just use parts of the border. You've got quite a few options. Either you can take a section like that, but you can cut these out almost like braids or, or trims. And again, that's got lovely brightness even. Not quite the colours of like the Hungarian um, style embroidery, but yeah, some beautiful brightness. This on top of there. I have to get my chickens out. We can't see my chickens. I have to reorganize it before I do my do my photo at the end. And then we have ooh, Paris. Again, planning a, a book with places I've cities I've visited and places I've visited um, a fabric style this is made in Japan and the fabric um, the linen is just lovely and again great because I'll be able to potentially sort of yeah fussy fussy cut out around around the buildings you can even make maybe some little um, Christmas decorations with little uh, Eiffel Towers and buildings on them because both Alex and I have yeah really loved our time in Paris in the past Christmas decorations don't always have to be super, super Christmassy. And then a lovely, beautiful piece of, it probably would have come off a curtain, I'm thinking, that, or maybe a sheet even. But yeah, lovely cotton linen. Again, lots of thread painting options at a really large scale. That would be lovely in a sort of, in a wooden hoop that you then hang it up in the in the hoop all thread painted into. And looks like I got a second piece of this wonderful, is it the same colorway? I think it is. So yeah, lots of lots of possibilities, but I like that I'll be able to just yeah cut around individual elements as well as using it in its entirety. Oops, picked those up. That on top of this one as well and that is the bag done so not too not too crazy um, and as I say that was built up over a number of months I'm not going too extravagant I'm really just trying to get things that are really in when I see them if they're really unique and I think they won't be won't come up again and just these braids and things I do like building those up but didn't go too overboard on the on the fabrics which was good um, I also got a lovely book from Mel, but I might save that for a separate um, video and we'll do a little flip through of that. So thanks so much for watching and congratulations to Patricia Page. Um, Patricia or Pat, have a look at the other comment that you left on the video and look for my reply with my um, email address where you can get in contact with me and supply your um, postal address so I can send your little package to you. Thanks everyone and stay tuned and I'll be back soon. Bye!